This is a power hacksaw that I was given by my granddad. Uh, doing a bit of research, it looks like it came from the USA during the First World War. Um, it's completely seized, solid, um, doesn't work. So I thought I'd restore it. There's a lot of rust, as you can see. I don't like to see things like this end up on the scrap pile, so I thought I'd do what I can. Um, the video will show me talking over the video and also me in the video talking. Um, as you can see, it's very, very, very rusty. And the first thing I did was remove the vise. And once that was removed, I started to strip it down a little bit further to see just how bad it really was. Okay, this is the next bit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and remove something off of this. I don't know which piece, either the flywheel or drive wheel, whatever, or main saw piece here. So, hmm. There's a glove to do on here anyway. Can't see one. It might just slide off if I take this off, but we'll see. I'll give it a go and see what happens. So it does slide off, but it's got stuck on the end, so I'm having to use a bearing puller. Uh, if you're wondering why am I doing this in a very tight corner of my shed, uh, it's because it's 9 o'clock at night and this thing weighs a lot and I'm not going to drag it out at night. So I'm going to keep having a go at this and hopefully it will slide off. Now it's in daylight, we can see just how much rust is on it, although I've managed to remove quite a few components. Um, I'll continue to remove even more. Uh, and then work out a way to make it look a little bit nicer and neaten up the workings of it. Okay, so this is the flywheel. This is what you use to engage the drive. And this is, this is kind of weird to explain, but this constantly spins on the shaft. This is bolted to the shaft so that when this spins round and round, round the shaft, you pull that, it pushes this towards this and it engages in these sort of gears here. So, see it sort of engages with that. So the flywheel turns, it turns this, it turns the inner shaft, and that gives you a drive to the saw. So, the wire wheel, all this, this, and this, and then paint it up, and hopefully it'll look good as new. I spent a lot of time not just wire wheeling it to get rid of all the grime, but also to put a lot of uh, cleaner on it to make sure there's no grease. Um, otherwise it, the paint won't stick very well. I'm using Halford's um, enamel paint. Uh, this is the enamel primer and I used it on both sides. Around two coats of each was enough to get the results that I wanted. A lot of my time was spent masking um, I can't emphasise that enough because it really saves a lot of time in the long run um, to make, make sure that it's well masked. Once it was painted, I put it into an oven because um, I find that with enamel based paint, I find that keeping it warm at least uh, does help it uh, dry, not just dry faster, but make, I find it makes it a little bit harder um, and more resistant. I did the same process with all of the components on the saw and they came out pretty well. Uh, the photos make it look worse than it really was if that makes sense but it really came out really nice. So outside now I'm looking at the framework of the saw. Um, I've always started to wire wheel this one and this one badly needs it. You can see how much surface rust there is, but it is just surface rust. It comes out really, really nicely after uh, the angle grind of the wire wheel. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, worth doing outside because it makes a lot of mess. So here you can see just how much work went into the masking of this uh, top piece. It's um, really important if you want good quality work you've got to mask it right. 
and this is just before I paint it and I use the the rotating table to assist me with that it just makes life so much easier prime it up I haven't primed the inside I'm gonna use a brush on like um like hammerite on the inside of there but for the outside just prime it up ready to go and so are the side panels so I'm just gonna spray those back now and away we go so whilst they were drying, I decided to get on with the vise. Um, the vise was pretty easy to work on, apart from this section here, which obviously as you can see required a bit of heat um, and an impact uh, driver as well. Um, but it all came apart with relative ease. Uh, it was like all the other components, a lot of rust. Um, but once I got a bit of grease and WD-40 into the uh, into all the mechanisms, it all came apart fairly easily. Was, um, yeah, this was quite a joy to work on, to be honest. Everything just came undone, which I really didn't expect. I was surprised I didn't have any sheared bolts. Okay, so this is the vise for the saw. Um, the camera stopped working when I was painting it up. So all I've done is prime it, well, I got rid of all the rust, primed it, then about four coats of enamel. Um, I haven't taken the masking tape off yet, that's now. Um, I've still got to clean up all the nuts and bolts, but that might take me a minute. I'll do that on my uh, wire wheel on the bench grinder. Um, so yes, yeah, so I've got to put, do that and put it all together. This is the part that I quite enjoy most, seeing how it looks after it's painted. Yeah, there it is, all done. I'm oh, pleased with how that came out. So, next step on the on the saw will be probably the main saw section itself, the, the blade holder. It's really good. Okay, this is the next set of parts, all masked up. I've just got to give it a quick degreasing and then give it a primer. All that's left after that is the big saw section, which should be quite straightforward. And boom. Okay, so I've got the main saw arm in the vise ready to get rid of all the rust with the wire wheel and the angle grinder. I've got my pain getting out the retainers inside here sit these retainers that hold this in place. That was pretty well rusted in there, but they're in there. Yeah, it's all in there in the pile. Uh, this is the last item of the saw that needs to be painted up other than the motor. So get in there. So I'll wire wheel this, get it painted and away we go. Okay, so here's all the parts ready to assemble. Uh, they look quite small in the, on the video, but they're bloody big and heavy. So I'm gonna start off with the main body, those two pieces there, and that piece there, and then build up from there. So, 
Let the build commence. I can recommend using decent masking tape. I used really cheap stuff and I spent more time removing the masking tape than I did actually building and putting together the saw. It, the masking tape really was that bad. It's get decent stuff because it drove me absolutely mad. Once the frame was together, I started to put on the sort of main shaft assembly. So this piece here was thoroughly greased, and then this is what I, the main saw sits on this piece here where the gibbs lie. Um, so every, all the screws were copper greased before installation because I knew I'd probably have to take them off again because uh, that tends to be the common thing with these sort of projects. Um, yeah, it was. Uh, it went together pretty nicely, although I had a couple of instances which really, really got me angry, uh, which you'll probably see in a bit. And then I warn you now, there's some bad language. <laughs> oh, fuck off. Unfortunately that falling down twice, it chipped the paint, which really, really annoyed me. And this is where it all sort of went a bit wrong in terms of the camera. Um, from here on it, it just died for some reason. But afterwards it all went together and it worked by hand perfectly well. As you turn the main flywheel you can engage and disengage and get the saw to move in and out. But other than that it really needed a motor. Uh, to get it working properly. So I was satisfied that this is how it was probably when it left the factory because the motor is not original. Um, but yeah, it came out really, really well. All right, this is the motor, the water motor. It is pretty chunky, it's squeaky. I'm still gonna fire it up and see what happens. The Lancashire Krypton hard to make out but you just don't get stuff made like this anymore look at that casting so I'll have this piece here shot blasted and then repainted so it stands out a little bit stuff like that I really really like that's nice I'll get it all cleaned up I'll take this top cover off find out where the cables go and then uh, see what happens when I Plug her in. So I've got it really badly wired. I don't recommend this, it's not even earthed. But I'm not going to touch it, and I'm wearing gloves. And my shed has RCDs and all sorts, so anyway, so there's Let's see what we get. It runs. It's squeaky. Maybe a dab of oil in some of these. Cool, the smell. Oh. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to. I'm definitely going to have to strip it down and get the bearings once over. A tiny cut of dabs on these. So I'll put some oil in the pots. See what we get. Mm, quieter. Yeah, still squeaking like a bitch. Well, I'll take it apart and see what's inside. 
Okay, the motor's disassembled. What a beast it is. There's no real bearings in there. They look like sort of bronze bushes more than bearings. The thrust washer in there, which I mustn't lose, that stops the back and forth movement of this. Inside, it's all pretty dirty. I'll clean it all up. I won't use any aggressive cleaners or anything like brake cleaner or anything like that. Um, just probably either methanol or something like that. And uh, get it all cleaned up. This here, so these are the contacts that the brushes, which are these, act against in the current flow for them. Um, it's pretty nasty and dirty, so I'll clean all that up nicely. Some people use uh, like a, a fine emery paper, but I won't. The worst I'll go with that is probably scotch Bright. It just, it just needs a, a light buff up, I think. Doesn't look too bad. Then degrease everything and uh, give it a lick of paint. Okay, I've started to clean up the commutator. I've only given it a quick wipe so you can see what it was like before. And then just after cleaning it with some bit of chemical cleaner and washing up pad. That's all I'm using. So I'll carry on with that. I'll try and clean it up all over. And then I'll get back to it. Okay, so I've cleaned it up as best as I can. Any other components, or at least the immediate components. So I'm going to put it back together and see how it runs. And I'm probably not going to repaint it because it's the original paint and it's not terrible. So I'll put it back together somehow. And this has the bushes. All seem okay. I'll give it a quick wipe over, wipe down, but yeah, doesn't seem too bad. There's not a load of grease all over it. It's all quite pretty good. And it sits on top of this, and it has two positions. You, you turn it to depict which direction you want the motor to go. I'll show you in a sec. Yeah, Don't lose that. So that goes. So that goes on there like that. You can move the brushes around to change the direction of the motor. And you've got little markers on here. One, two, and just screw it down to whichever one you think it should be. And it was on this one, so I'm gonna put it back on that one. Okay, here we go. Did you enjoy it? Although my direction of travel thing is uh, way off. So let's give that a test. I'm going to test that actually. Let's look one way. Turn it the other way. So that's showing anti clockwise from my side. So I'll move it along. Now it's going clockwise. So 
So, yeah. Excellent. I'm going to throw it all back together again, give it a clean up, and I think we're done. So, I've set up the saw and I've welded some box section and welded this piece here, this rod, rod. this is threaded um, and then welded to the side so it gives tension. I put it on this side because this both pulleys on the same side so I felt it should be more, I was going to put it in the middle but I thought it was more beneficial to have it here because otherwise it will start to try and twist. Um, it's just a rough to get it tested and make sure it all sort of works and I'll neaten it all up. Um, so, as it come back out, so we've got saw going to the small pulleys and big pulley going to the, the fat motor. It's very, very dusty, the motor at the moment, but that's just because of this old belt. It's um, been throwing off quite a lot of crap, but it's just to test it. Um, yeah. One thing I had to do was machine out of aluminium, little plate down here. What this does is it catches it. When it finishes the cut, it will catch it and then stop it from just, the saw from just plummeting and smashing into things. Um, but this, it, it did originally have something here, but it didn't look like it worked very well. So I machined up this piece of aluminium and then added a really, really, hard piece of foam so there's no to reduce the shock um, and we'll continue cutting and then uh, we shall continue and then I'll show you what it's like at the end but I switched the motor on I haven't done the wiring properly either but it's literally just plugged into the mains so I'll switch it on it's nice and quiet that's running away and then just pulling this lever and it activates the dog dog gear here and there we go. I put grease in the grease cups down there and I've also added oil into the two oil cups. It seems to be working quite well. I've also added the optional weight that goes on the top to help put pressure onto the uh, some the material as it cuts. I've already cut this one to test it out. But I need two pieces because I'm going to turn these into feet from here. So I'm going to have wheels at the back and feet at the front. I've had wheels on all four, but it was trying to run away with itself. So, so uh, yeah, excellent. Next thing will be once I've finished the feet redo all the stuff under here, paint it all up and make it look nice and get the motor attached to the back around here somewhere and hopefully it'll be finished. Well it's a few weeks later on lockdown with the coronavirus outbreak so I thought I'd carry on. Unfortunately I couldn't record a lot of stuff like the fabrication of certain things but that's life unfortunately. So now the motor's attached, I made this bracket down here out of steel box section. I've got some plugs coming for the holes just to give it that professional look at the end. I've got brand new belts. Painted up all the pulleys. Everything's in permanently now. Painted uh, these towers here, these are the bearings. So I've also put caps on the ends of these. So we have an adjuster here to adjust the tension and it just slides along these rails here.
It sort of came with various weights that you can put to give it more pressure on the cut. Uh, it's now wired up. I need to get some black cable ties to put the cables neatly away, but I've got a, a wired up this old stop start button. Works a treat. Maybe get a plug for the top as well, but I've already ordered that. I'm waiting for that to come. Motors all restored. Look at that, just don't make them like that anymore. So, let's fire her up. Thanks for watching. Hope it inspires someone else to do something similar.